Now, the fourth aspect of a theology that a theology of science must recognise is the ubiquitous context of pain. Whenever the biblical material talks about the human relationship with the natural world, pain and suffering uh, are never far away. Um, we've talked about pro the book of Proverbs at the heart of the wisdom literature. The book of Proverbs is almost continually concerned with the painful consequence of a life, of a life lived unwisely. The Genesis narrative finishes with thorns and briars and sweat of brow and childbirth um, as a consequence of the human fallen relationship with nature. As we'll see, um, what I believe to be the prime passage for understanding theologically the human relationship with nature, the book of Job, is um, often known as the song of the suffering righteous man. It's, it's, uh, its subject matter, um, ostensibly, is that of pain. In the New Testament, um, we have St. Paul in Romans um, writing about the pains so all, of all creation groaning as in the pains of childbirth until the future redemption of, of the world. So um, the, uh, the painfulness of our grappling with, our understanding of the natural world is biblically attested to throughout Old and New Testaments, actually apart from one place only, which is literally the exception that proves the rule in Revelation 22. If you look at it, you'll find it's the only discussion of the deep structure of the physical world that doesn't talk about pain. In fact, it talks explicitly of the absence of pain. That's one of the aspects of the eschatological new creation that we find there. Now, those of you who are scientists or know people who are will know that sometimes we tend to put over an over brave face on the public, uh, other public um, communication we have around around science. Science is a painful, long, sweaty process. Um, just as we're recording this, very recently uh, has been the wonderful first announcement of the discovery or detection of gravitational waves. Um, it's a huge cultural achievement which opens our ears to the universe in a sense when we've only had eyes to see it until now. That has taken two or three generations of labour, of commitment, of belief of those who were convinced that we could do this but who spent their whole, whole scientific careers taking the engineering a bit closer but fruitlessly for them. It's an illustration of, uh, of the painful um, story of science.